Hi, this is ET370 Lecture 6B, and here we'll talk about buck and boost converters. Um, and uh, we'll actually add a little bit uh, about uh, a buck boost converter that's combined together. All right, so let's look at a buck uh, and boost converter. Well, um, it's mainly for DC. Now, you, if you recall, for our um, for AC systems, we can use these transformers, right? Pretty nice. Um, super simple technology here. You just have steel and copper coils wrapped around and uh, this steps up and steps down AC voltage, but this is a transformer. Uh, and uh, what if we have DC voltage, right? What if we wanna step that up and down? Well, now we can use our uh, nice transistor technology and still incorporate capacitors, inductors, and diodes. So uh, let's uh, talk about these two things and what a buck converter does is it steps down DC voltage. So the output is less than the input and a boost converter does a step up voltage and current. Okay, so let's look at an example of a buck converter. All right, so we've seen a very simple one. Uh, imagine we have a transistor doing PWM, we have some load and here's your input and output voltage. And uh, if you can uh, pulse this PWM with a, a certain duty cycle, if you remember the duty cycle is just a square wave where the ratio of the on time to the PWM period is the duty cycle, then the output voltage is, is approximately the input voltage times that duty cycle. Now, this is not smooth. Right. Okay. So this is a, uh, uh, and you're relying on maybe the inertia of the load if it's a motor, both mechanical and electrical, to smooth it out. But what if you want to actually make it smoother, right? So this is kind of the same thing, but we've added a second order filter, a second order low pass filter. We've talked about first order low pass filters. If you want to click and find the first order low pass filter video, in my video and in, in my video series, you can do so. And uh, what you have is a smoothing capacitor here and you have an inductor and a diode. Okay, and we'll explain what these do. Um, but uh, if you recall, the low pass filter only passes low frequency, right? So if you have this high frequency chattering behavior here, this won't see it, this will be smoother. And uh, um, you gotta tune these correctly, but there, there is an opportunity to get some resonance with the second order. Right, but the fall off is much steeper. Instead of 20 dB per decade, it's 40 dB per decade. Okay, but that's for another lecture. All right, so let's just look at how this works. So imagine we have this output voltage load, we have this switch here, and this could be controlled by a MOSFET or a bipolar junction transistor, but we have a switch that opens and closes. And let's look at the situation where it's closed. When this is closed, what's going on? Well, this diode is going to be in reverse bias because you have a high voltage at the at this uh, cathode, right? And so current's going to want to flow through here through the inductor and charge up the capacitor and it's going to uh, supply energy or electricity to the load. Okay. Now, what is happening to this inductor? Remember, what are hydro analogies? The capacitor is like a uh, flexible membrane, the inductor is like a inertia like water wheel, right? So this is now spooling up, okay? And this is now deflecting, so it's charging charging up, okay? Now when the switch opens, what happens? Well, now the source gets removed from the circuit essentially for this short time. And the inductor, which is spooled up, is gonna provide current into the load and same with the capacitor. They both are gonna discharge. Now, the reason why you need that diode here is because what's gonna happen is this current's gonna wanna keep flowing through and look at this, you're gonna need this path to, to complete the circuit and allow the inductor current to, to circulate and dump that energy into the resistor, okay? So it provides a current path for the inductor. That's what this diode is for, okay? Now, again, the duty cycle is the ratio of the on to the uh, time to the PWM period. And so you get the same behavior, but now it's, it's a little bit better, it's smoother, okay? So this is a buck converter. Now, there's no power losses in the system, which is, not possible, but uh, in an ideal situation, the output power and the input power are the same. And so we know power is I times V. And um, if you have a relationship of output to input, like so, the current is gonna have the inverse relationship. So instead of uh, I in times D, it's I in times one over the duty cycle to the output. Now I put average current here because um, this input current is gonna be choppy, right? It's gonna be on and off, right? 
And uh, the concept is, well, when the voltage output goes up relative to the input, then the current is going to go down, right? That's seen here. Or when the voltage goes down, the current ratio goes up, right? Now I want you to note something. We'll see it in the simulation. The output current goes up relative to the input current. However, they both, in terms of their absolute value, might be very low, right? Okay, so don't just think, oh, low voltage, yeah, super high current. No, 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 it's high relative to the input and both could be low values and you will see that. Okay, so let's switch over the simulation and see the behavior. Okay, so you can go here and the links, as always, whenever I show these simulations, check out the description so that you can click on it and play with these parameters. So if we look at the simulation, we have the output voltage, here's a load. Um, we have a capacitor and inductor and a diode here. And then we have this MOSFET switch and we have the, uh, the constant fixed five volts. And so the output voltage is the duty cycle uh, times the input and the output current is one over the duty cycle times the input. So I'm gonna run this, right? If I run this right now, we're at a very low duty cycle of 8% in this case, right? And so what's cool is this slider over here controls this duty cycle. And what you can see here is uh, we have five volts fixed, but notice the voltage is very small, right? Now, do we have a high current? Remember it's the inverse? Uh, sure, we have a high current relative to the input current, but look, they're in the microamp range, right? 180 microamps, 19 microamps. So that's kind of pointing out what I was saying before, how, yeah, sure, the output current is high relative to the input, but not high in the absolute sense. Okay, let's increase the, uh, the duty cycle to let's say around 50%. So here we are, duty cycle is uh, 48%. You can see that the, the on time is now bigger and uh, you can, I hope you can, you saw this rise that the inductor and capacitor is not tuned great. And so there's a little bit of rise, you know, overshoot and kind of oscillation before it steadies out. But notice the voltage now, see how it's kind of settling out at about two and a half, 2.3 volts. So about 50% of what the input voltage is. And if we look at this, there should be a two to one because one over 50% or one over 0.5 is two. And let's double check. Look at this, two amps, and what do we have on the average? One milliamp, sorry, two milliamps to one milliamp. And like I said, the input current is choppy, right? Okay, so every time this opens up, no current, and every time it closes, what happens? You get this ramp up from the first order effect of this inductor uh, spooling up. Okay, now let's go to a larger duty cycle here. Okay, so notice the voltage goes up, yep. There's a little bit of overshoot, yep, so that's not good. But like I said, that's just the, these uh, inductor capacitors not being tuned great. Uh, but I think the concept's there. And you can see that the voltage kind of settles around 4.8-ish you know, volts, which is now within 90% or so, or yeah, 88, 90% of the input, okay? So this is a buck converter with a second order filter. All right, so let's go stop this and go back to uh, the boost converter. Okay, so for the boost converter, what we have is a system where we have an inductor. Okay, Ooh, sorry, I think we're on the wrong page. Where's my boost converter circuit? My boost converter circuit. My, oops, sorry, I just took it. Uh, boost converter circuit right here, apologies. And uh, what we have is a circuit with still a switch, a diode, a inductor, a capacitor, and my load. And we have an input and output. And again, the C is gonna be this capacitor for smoothing. But this inductor here, this is what's gonna give us the boost. It's kind of weird. Like I remember when I first was exposed to a boost converter, I'm like, what? You can magically take like five volts and get 10 out? How is this, you know, mystery wizardry possible, right? And uh, it kind of comes back to our ET250 analysis with inductors, right? So let's just analyze this slowly and see what's going on. So imagine we have state one, okay? Let's say we start off with no current here, right? It's uncharged. But now I've, um, what do you call it? I've, I've closed the switch. I've used a transistor, closed the switch and, uh, current's going to start flowing through this inductor. And remember, we have this L start spinning up, 
right? So uh, currents uh, going here, this flywheel action is spinning this up, okay? Now this, this diode is gonna be essentially in reverse bias because you've essentially taken this uh, point and shorted it to ground. So you have a, a low voltage point here, right? So no, no current's gonna flow through that diode. Okay, so I got this spooling up and now what happens? Well, when I open up this switch, all that current is now going to dump through this diode and into the capacitor and into the resistor. So the inductor energy discharges into the capacitor and resistor. Now, what happens is that this output voltage is actually going to be higher than the input. And again, this is like, really, is this wizardry happening? Is this true? Well, here's what happens. We can do a simple little KVL minus vi so i have a little kvl minus vi plus vl plus v naught equals zero no problem okay and uh we can solve for the output voltage which is just vi minus vl good and i look at this question like well that's a negative number that doesn't help our case right but let's again go to the definition or the equation for an inductor vl equals l di tt okay no problem and current going to the positive terminal great uh, and i have a positive well in this case, if current's going through here, it actually is decreasing in its I, right? So that means the DIDT is actually going to be negative because it's going to spool down, right? It's spooled up already. Now it's discharging. So what happens? Well, if the DIDT is negative and I have a negative here, that double negative makes a positive. And so what do I have? I have V naught equals the input voltage plus a positive number here. And so that's how I get the output voltage is bigger than the input. Kind of a cool concept, right? So you're doing this charge up, pew, charge up, pew, okay? Now, if I close it again, what happens? If I close that switch again, now this is going to charge back up. The diode's gonna go back into reverse bias. Now the capacitor, since this was charged up, is gonna be the one that provides energy to the resistor, okay? And the cycle repeats. And the, the relationship between the output to the input is not a one over D, as you would expect. It's one over one minus the duty cycle. Hmm, interesting. And what about if power is conserved? Well, the output current is going to be one minus C. Notice the inverse relationship. And again, II, the current going here is going to be average because this is choppy. Okay, what does that mean? Well, let's do, let's put some numbers in it. Let's say the duty cycle is 90%. That means I'm 90% of the time closed and then for 10% of the time I open. So if I'm closing this down 90% of the time, I'm really allowing this uh, inductor to charge up, okay? So if I'm really allowing this inductor to charge up when I open it, this voltage should be pretty high, okay? So what happens? Well, if I plug into this formula, I get one over one minus 0.9, which is one over 0.1, which is 10. So if I close this down 90% of the time, I open up, this is gonna shoot up to 10 times the input voltage, okay? Which is of course greater than VI. If the duty cycle is 0.9, again, still 0.9, what is the current? It's 1% or sorry, 10% of II, right? which is less. And you can see that, well, if you think about what happens physically, if I close this, the majority of the time the current's going through this, and then you only get a short time where that current actually gets to go to the load, okay? So you, you, you get a smaller current, right? And uh, we can look at this on the simulation. So let's switch over and let's look at the boost converter and I have it here. So output voltage load, I have the capacitor, and now here's the diode and here's the inductor all in series, but I have this switch here that is right after the inductor between the inductor and the diode, okay? I have a current meter and I have the fixed five volts. Right now I'm setting my duty cycle to 50%, which should be, if I use this equation, one over one minus 0.5 is one over 0.5, which is two. And so let's see if I'm getting approximately that relationship. Look at the output voltage, nine volts RMS as opposed to five volts. Good, so I'm getting a 10 volt, nearly smooth DC signal here, okay? And you can see the duty cycle on this MOSFET. And remember a MOSFET is just a, another uh, voltage controlled switch, the transistor. And uh, this is 50%, yep. Yeah. And you can see the current, right? The current in here is, is kind of choppy. And uh, are we seeing a half? Well, we have nine milliamps here and 18 here, yeah? Yeah, that makes sense. This is about half. Okay, if I drop the duty cycle down, 
Okay, so if I drop the duty cycle down, let's see what it settles out to. And again, these capacitor uh, inductor pairs are not the best tuned, right? But if I, if I go, let's say as I go closer to zero, I should see more of a one-to-one -one relationship between the output and the input voltage, right? And you can see, look at this voltage is dropping, right? You can see we're now we're getting down to about 5.3, close to this five volts, okay, 5.5, .5, right? Now, what about the current, right? So uh, here we're saying that the output current is again close because it, it, as this duty cycle goes to zero, what happens then you're just your output and your input again are also going to be the same, right? So one minus zero is just one, right? And so we're we seeing a relatively similar current. Yep, 5.6 versus seven. Yeah, a little bit smaller, which makes sense. But yeah, smaller current here, good. Okay, now what if I go back up? So if I go up to the 80, 90% range, let's see if this voltage uh, increases, right? So look at the duty cycle, we're in the 80, 90% range, 84%, yep. And what we should see is, well, we gotta wait for this thing to charge up, right? Let, let uh, again, these, they're not the best tune, but you can see this voltage starting to rise, right? This output voltage is starting to gain, uh, gain uh, value here. So 18, uh, 19, right? Now this is again, poorly tuned. We, you would wanna tune this so it has a good reaction time, right? Relative to your changes in duty cycle. But the concept is there, look at this. The voltage is increasing relative to this fixed source of five volts, right? And uh, let's see if we have, and look at this current. If the current has a duty cycle of around 0.9, one minus a number close to one is gonna be a small number. And look at this current here, 25 milliamps versus 172 milliamps. So good, the inverse relationships are, are taking effect, okay? Now, again, all these links are in the, um, in the description of this YouTube video, but check it out. You can go, I love this Falstad simulator. What's cool is you can go here to power converters and you have buck and boost converters right here. I just modify it, add a little bit of text, but uh, I did not create this. This was all created by the author or some, some author. So thank you very much, Falstad. This is some awesome stuff. Okay, let's go and look at one last thing and that's a buck and boost converter. Okay, so I'm gonna stop share here. And uh, um, <sighs> Let's uh, come back to here. And the buck and boost converter was used, that I'm gonna show you, was used in this uh, application for a wind uh, generation project. So I, um, just a little personal note, I'm actually one of the electrical mentors for the Cal Maritime Collegiate Wind Competition. And uh, this is where students build an electric generator where we take wind energy uh, and we, we use a three phase motor or three phase generator. We use a rectifier that we've, that we've actually talked about in this class, a three phase rectifier to convert it to DC. And then um, the team used a buck boost circuit to convert it uh, into a DC voltage of their desire, right? Now you can do anything you want with it, take it into this load, but uh, you can get optimal properties by being able to control the voltage here. Now here at the wind speed, if it goes up and down, up and down, the amplitude and frequency of this three phase is gonna go up and down, up and down, and so is the amplitude of this DC here. But if you have a buck and boost converter, you can monitor this and then regulate voltage to whatever you want, okay? And so um, shout out to uh, David Kitzelkaya, um, who is a Cal Maritime ME mechanical engineering grad. Um, in 2019, he designed this circuit, right? And uh, I helped him, but uh, the majority of the work was done by him. This is a, a circuit done in EagleCAD by Autodesk, very cool product, a, a set of software. And here's the schematic. And you can see that there's a buck circuit here. Notice the transistor, or notice the diode inductor and a boost circuit, it's just smashed together. And you can see the output has a smoothing capacitor, right? And here's the diode here. So I hope you can see that this is a, a smashed together buck and boost so that you can do both, step it down and step it up as you need to, which is kind of nice right? Um, this is the physical layout of that circuit diagram, right? It's uh, kind of crazy, but you've got your uh, boost FET, your buck FET, which is your MOSFET, right? And uh, you have your dry, you have your diodes and this big fat inductor and your capacitor somewhere here, uh, right there. Um, and this is one of the implementations. This is physically, you got your rectifier, your buck boost, right? Your Arduino is controlling everything, relays. Um, so pretty cool stuff here. Um, but yeah, 
we physically this is a physical implementation of this buck boost concept and so hope you enjoyed this lecture and i'll see you in the next part <laughs>